So today I'm going to show you how to root the Creality K1 series machines. One of the great things about rooting is it gives you total control over the machine itself, none of the Creality stuff in the way. Uh, one of the downsides is if you like Creality Cloud or Creality Slicer, you won't be able to use that. So if you're in tune with that, this is not the video for you. But if you want a little bit more control over your machine, this is a good place to start. Now the firmware we're going to be using today is something called Simple AF by a guy named Pelcorp. Now this is a clipper firmware. It has fluid, mainsail, moonraker, and anything you would need to fully control your K1 machine. This firmware is constantly evolving and there's an active community staying on top of any changes or anything like that. So before we do anything, we actually have to get root access to the machine itself. Now, luckily, Creality has made this incredibly easy. So from the home screen, we just hit settings right here and then scroll down to root account information right here. You can just hit this check mark. It's gonna say blah, blah, blah. If you mess up your machine, it's not our responsibility. And it will give you a 30 second countdown. So we're just gonna let that countdown go and hit okay. And there we go. Now the countdown is complete and it was really obnoxious. Let's just hit okay. And here's the password, creality underscore 2023. Now that we have that unlocked, we need to go back to settings and go to network. It's going to tell you your IP address for this machine. And on this machine, is 10.1.0.85. That's not going to be the machine I root, but that's the address for this one. So keep in mind, all steps for this video are actually done in Linux. If you don't know how to make a Linux live USB, don't worry, I have another video coming that's going to show you how to do that. And don't be overwhelmed. Not only will you learn a new skill, but it's incredibly easy. First, you need to plug in your big tree tech Eddy. You need to plug this into the same computer that you're using Linux on. When plugging in the Eddy, hold down the button at the top by the USB port and keep holding it down while you plug in the USB. This will put the device into boot mode so we can go ahead and flash it. So now we're going to go ahead and flash the Big Tree Tech Eddy. I provided a link in the description to go directly to the GitHub with the instructions that you need, but I'm going to walk you through this. On Ubuntu, at the bottom left of your keyboard, you can hit the Windows key or the Super key to open up the overview. And then just type in Terminal. Once you have Terminal open, we're going to go ahead and paste the commands from the GitHub directly into it. And the first command we're going to paste in is these dependencies pulls. So we're going to pull these dependencies into Ubuntu. Just paste that in and hit Enter. Now that those dependencies are pulled in, we're going to go to the next step. And the next step down here, we need to pull the GitHub repository. Again, just paste that in and hit enter. And just like that, now we have the Clipper repository. We need to flash this. Now that we have that done, again, just like before, we'll just hit this copy right here in the corner and then drop that command into the terminal as well. And we have two more to go. And here's the last command right here. This last command right here actually flashes the Big Tree Tech Eddy. So we just copy this like before and make sure that we drop that directly into the terminal window and hit enter. And then once you see this right here, the rebooting device, that means you can go ahead and pull your USB from your Big Tree Tech Eddy and we can move on to the next step. Now, if you have a problem with the last step right here and you don't get the reboot device, that's because I skipped over a step, which in most cases I found that we don't really need to do because the address is always the same. If the address is not the same, you can go ahead and run this command in the terminal. And this is going to pull up all your USB devices. And you want to look for the Raspberry Pi RP2 boot and make sure that this address right here for that device matches this section in the last command. As long as this address matches this in the LS USB, then you should be fine to run this command and you should have no issues. Now we're going to flash the K1 machine. I put a link in the description to go directly to the GitHub that you need. And on coming here, you might be overwhelmed, but don't worry, you don't need most of this information. You can go ahead and read it if you want, but what we're going to do is come over here to the right side and click installation. Now the first thing we need to do for the installation is we're going to factory reset the machine. And to do this, we're going to open up a new terminal window. So again, hit your Windows key at the bottom left of your keyboard or super key and type in terminal. Now your K1 machine should be connected to Wi-Fi. And the first thing we want to do is make sure that we SSH into the machine itself. So type in SSH, 
root at, and then the IP address of your machine. Now my machine is 10.1.0.81. And it's going to come up with a prompt right here asking you if you want to accept the fingerprint of this SSH connection. And we just want to go ahead and type in yes. And the default password for the Creality K1 machines is just Creality underscore 2023. And now we're into the machine. So again, let's just go and copy this command from the GitHub, the factory reset command, and drop that into our terminal window. Once you've done that, you should see this factory reset, just press enter. So in my experience, this SSH connection does not properly terminate. Do not close this terminal. What you wanna do is make sure you monitor the front screen on your K1 machine. And once you see the interface fully come up, we can go ahead and close out of this SSH connection. So now the interface has come back up on our machine, we can go ahead and close out of that SSH connection. And the way you do that is by hitting Control X. Now, if Control X doesn't work, don't worry. Just close that terminal window and open up a new one the way I showed you before. Now, the next step is to clone the repository onto the machine. And we go back to the GitHub directly under the factory reset. And we do this clone repository. So we'll just copy that and go back to our terminal. We need to SSH back into our machine. So SSH root. And then the IP address of your machine. And then again, it's just Creality underscore 2023. And we'll go ahead and copy that in and let this pull in the repo. Once that's done, you'll see this sync come up. Just go ahead and hit enter. And we're going to go ahead and go on to the next step. So since we're using the Big Tree Tech Eddy for this video, we're going to come down here to the run installer. And at the very bottom, you'll see BTT Eddy. We're going to copy this right here and drop that into our terminal window and just press enter. This is going to take a second, but don't worry. Just let it do its thing. And then once it's done, we'll move on to our next step. So now that we have our prompt back and that's ready, you'll see this right here to reboot the machine. Now, this is asking you to actually flip the power switch on the back, but we don't want to do that just yet. In the description, I provide a link to another GitHub right here. This is a simple add-on that I've done for Simple AF. Now, what this does is it adds a few things to make life a little bit easier on us. We have a new autosave offset for the Big Tree Tech Eddy. We have our probe calibrate macro, which will walk you through calibrating the probe. We have quick start. And the quick start is going to do all the basic calibration that you need to get your machine up and going so you're not sitting there doing a bunch. You can just walk away and let the quick start work. So we're just going to copy this command right here and drop that into the terminal. So now we're done with terminal, so you can go ahead and close that. The next thing you want to do is go and open up another tab and type in the address for your machine. Thankfully, Simple AF uses the default port 80, so we don't have to type in any ports or anything extra like that. Just type in the address of the machine, and you should see fluid. Now, if you want to use main sale, main sale is provided, and there is a port for that. But we're not doing that today. So here we go. We have Fluid open. Now we want to do a few things before we can go ahead and use it. So since we're using the side mount for the BTT Eddy probe, we need to go ahead and change two files. And that would be the BTT Eddy config and the BTT Eddy dash K1 config. So we'll go ahead and open this. You can see these are commented out right here. There's an offset for the probe on the back versus the offset for the probe on the side. So we're going to come right here and we're just going to hit hash and comment those out. And then we'll open these up by deleting that hashtag at the very beginning. And we're just going to go ahead and hit save. We can close that and we can move on to the next one, which is the BTT Eddy K1 config. Now again, we're going to see some code commented out here. This is for the probe that is side mounted. Now, since we're using the side mount probe, we're going to go ahead and uncomment that and move down here to the old one and comment those out. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and hit save restart. Now, this is going to take a second, and sometimes Clipper is a little weird on the restarts. If you have a restart issue, you just go up here and hit the restart button and restart Clipper firmware again. So now that we're done with all that, we can go back over here to our Home tab. And you'll notice in our Home tab, this looks a lot better than the Creality baked out version of Fluid itself. 
we have a lot more options and we can control the machine a lot better through this interface. So now that we have the machine rooted with the new firmware, we need to go ahead and do some basic calibrations. And the first calibrations that we're gonna do is the calibrations for the probe. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up the interface on my phone. And the way we do that is by typing in that IP address again. So mine is 10.1.0.81. Now you may have a warning saying it's not safe. What you wanna do is go to advanced and just hit ignore and proceed anyways. It's just telling you that there's no HTTPS certificate. Now, once you have the interface open on your phone, you wanna go down to the macro section. And here's our macros. And we wanna hit this calibrate BTT Eddy. And this is gonna open up a new window. And in this macro, it's gonna show you all the steps that are required to calibrate the Eddy. In the very first step, we're gonna hit step one and just home the printer. In step two, it says close this dialog window and enable force move in the printer's web UI tool section and move the bottom of the probe 20 millimeters away from the bed. Now, the way we do this is we go ahead and we close the calibration and we go back up to the tool section right here. And we enable force move. Now, you need to pay very close attention to this to make sure that you don't damage your printer. You can run the bed into the tool head. So just take it slow and make sure that you're paying attention. Now, remember in the Clipper UI, down is up and up is down. It's a little counterintuitive. But now that we have the bed a little bit closer to our nozzle, we can go back to one. And what we need to do at this point is take a ruler and measure from the bottom of the probe to the bed. Now we're too close right there. We need to be 20 millimeters. So let's go down. And that's almost perfect, but not quite. So let's step it back up. Step it down one, and it looks like we are perfect right there. So now we can go back to our Calibrate Eddy macro. So now that the probe and the bed are the proper distance away, we need to calibrate the drive current for the BTT Eddy. So in step three, we're gonna press this button and the drive current will calibrate and the machine will automatically save the changes and restart. The dialog window will close and we will come back to it. Now the clipper is rebooted, we'll go back to the Calibrate section of the macros, Calibrate BTT Eddy, and we'll go on to the next step. Now step four is close this dialog window and enable force move in the printer's web UI tool section and move the nozzle where it's about two millimeters off the bed. Once it's complete, we'll return back to this dialog window again. So let's go ahead and do that back to the tool section. And you'll see that I still have force move enabled. At this point, you wanna make sure that you just leave it on one and we'll move it down. <laughs> and right there, we're about two millimeters away. So let's return back to the calibrate window now step five is a paper slash feeler gauge test to make sure that our offset is correct for the BTT Eddy. Once we hit calibrate, a new dialog window will open up, allowing us to step down the nozzle closer or further away from the bed. And we'll use either a feeler gauge or a piece of paper to make sure that our offset is perfect where we want it. Now that our probe dialog menu is open, we'll take a piece of paper or a feeler gauge and we'll put it onto the nozzle and step the nozzle down until we feel slight friction on the paper or feeler gauge. We don't want it to be tight, we just want to have slight friction. So here's my feeler gauge. And I'll begin to step this nozzle down. Take your time and make sure you don't go too fast. You don't want to run the nozzle into the bed of the printer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now that we have the nozzle perfect with the feeler gauge or paper, we want to go ahead and hit accept. Once we hit accept, the printer will go through and calibrate the BTT Eddy. Once it's done, we want to go up to the top right corner or the top and just hit the save icon to save that. 
So now that that's complete, I'm gonna go ahead and close the printer up and move back over to the computer to show you the last step of calibration, which would be the quick start that we installed earlier. Now that we're back on the computer, I can just come back down to macros and make sure to hit quick start. It's going to open up a dialog window to kind of tell you what's going on right here. Now this process will take 30 to 40 minutes approximately. And during this process, make sure you do not touch, bump, or interact with the printer in any way. Now we'll hit start calibrate. And again, once this is done, it will automatically save the settings and just restart the computer. While this is running in the web interface, you will be able to see in the console exactly what's going on. But again, do not touch the printer, do not bump, do not interact with it in any way. So now that Quick Start is completed and we started the machine, I'm gonna show you how the autosave Z offset function works. I'm gonna go ahead and print a first layer here, go back to the phone and show you exactly what you need to do to use the autosave Z offset function. So as you can see, our first layer is not looking that good. So we're gonna go ahead and use the autosave Z offset function. Now, how do we do that? We actually go right here to the tool section and you can see a baby step option. I wanna click 0.01, and we're gonna go ahead and step that down. Now you can see our Z offset has changed. And I wanna step that down until it starts to squish that layer exactly how I want it to. So with the auto save Z offset function, every change that you make with a baby step is automatically saved in a variables.config file. Each time the printer is started, that file is loaded automatically, giving you your Z offset. Now with enough adjustment, you can get a near perfect first layer. It takes time and just be patient with it, but once you're happy with it, that offset will always be there. And if you need to make any adjustments, you can do them with baby steps and it will automatically take care of it for you. So now we have our machine rooted with custom clipper firmware, Simple AF. And at this point, there's nothing really left to do. Just make sure you use that auto save Z offset to your advantage. Just take some time and work with it and make sure that you get that perfect first layer. And at this point, there's really nothing left for me to say. So thanks for watching.